All right, before we can get into talking about making beats and making choruses, I really want to just cover a little bit of music theory. Now, I'm only teaching the very, very basics here. If you want to know more about music theory, you can go on YouTube and find somebody who definitely knows a lot more about this topic than I do. My goal is only to introduce people who have never really gotten any information on music theory before. So right off the bat, if you see this piano, it might be intimidating. You know, you can have up to 88 or more keys. You know, it looks like a lot of different notes. But really, you know, we can simplify this and just look at it like this. And this is really all you need to know. There are only 12 different keys. There are only 12 different notes. And this is how they're labeled. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And you can identify them based on these black notes on a piano. So what you'll see is that the white key to the left of the two black notes is a C, and then the white key that's to the left of the three black notes is an F. In between that, it's just the alphabet, really, C, D, E, F, G, and then it just kind of starts over at A, B. So when you look at an actual piano, really all you're seeing is the same thing repeated over and over and over again. So you can see here, this is a C because there's two black notes and to the left of that, this white key is a C, a D, an E, and then here you have a set of three black notes, so this is an F, a G, an A, and a B. And then here it starts over again, we're at a C, because again, two black notes and to the left of that is a C. So it's pretty straightforward, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, then it starts over C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So every single note, for example, let's say we have the middle C right here. That note is basically the same note as the C up here. The only difference is that it is an octave higher. So if we were to go one more octave up. But notice that all of these keys sound pretty much identical. Hopefully you can tell the difference between that and a note that is not a C. For example, that's an A. So if I were to play an A an octave higher, the only difference between that second A that I played is that it is one octave higher than the other A. Now in music, they have all kinds of scales. We're only gonna be focusing on the very basic ones. So for example, the major scales, this is a C major. And as you can see, it is very simply all the white notes. So one thing I want you to take away from this is that if you play nothing but white notes on a piano, it is all going to be in the same scale. So therefore, it will all sound relatively good together. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna sound like Beethoven, but if all you do is hit on the white keys without touching any of the black keys, they will all be in the same scale together. The only thing you do not want to do is play any of the keys that are not part of the scale. So for example, if you were making a song that was in C major, you do not want to play any of these black notes. However, if we went down to F major, you can see that all of these white notes are fair play, but we cannot play a B. However, we can play this black note right here. So coming back to this photo, black notes are either called sharps or flats. So for example, if I were to talk about this black note right here, I could call it a C sharp because it is one this is called a half step. So when we go from this note to this note, and then when we go from this note to this note, that is called a half step. So going from C to this black note, that makes this note right here C sharp. However, if we were talking about it in terms of D, then this would be D flat. It's the same note regardless of what you call it. It sounds exactly the same. So for example, this black note right here can be either D sharp or it can be E flat. Now when I say a half step, a half step is literally going from one note to the next closest note. So in this case, a half step would be going from C to C sharp. However, you can see there's no black note here. So this would be a half step going from E to F. So what that means is that technically F is also called E sharp. And conversely, E can be referred to as F flat. All you're really doing is basing it on one note and going one half step up. If I were to start at C, and if I were to take two half steps, for example, one, two, then that would be considered a whole step, which should make sense because two halves is a whole. So if I were to go from D to E, that is also one whole step. If I were to go from E to F sharp, that is a whole step. Because again, this is one half step, another half step. If you look at a bigger picture of a piano, obviously right here we have the C, which means that this is A and B. So going from B to C, that is also one half step. Now it's always a good idea to look at a website like this. You know, they have all the different major scales. For example, you know, you have D and you have B flat. You'll notice that F sharp is a different scale, but it uses all of the black notes. And the only white notes you're allowed to use are B and E sharp, which is also known as F. 
But the thing I want you to take away from this is that if you play nothing but notes in the same scale, it will generally sound good together. So if you're brand new to music theory and you're making a, a song in F sharp major, these are the only notes you're allowed to play. Don't play a D or an E because that will be out of scale. It will sound bad. Now there are always going to be weird exceptions and that is well beyond the scope of this course. If you're starting out, stick with the basics. One thing I did want to point out is that all of these scales are pretty much relative. And let me try to show you what I mean by that because I think it's easier to show you than explain. I want you to ignore these numbers on the bottom here. We're going to start here at 1 and we're just going to count this as 1. Now if we're taking half steps, we go up one half step and another half step. So if we're counting, we're starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are all the numbers that have a sticker on them. 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Everything is the exact same distance apart in every scale. The only difference is I'm going to be starting at F. But I still start at F, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. Just like right here, 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. All of these notes are the same distance apart from each other, regardless of what scale you're referring to. And that is an important concept that I need you to remember. And you can even go through and look at these and count them out again, starting at D. The only difference in all of these is that you're starting at a different place. But if you count D as number one, go to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that determines which notes you're allowed to use. So I pulled up FL Studio real quick to kind of give you a visual example. We're going to be talking about FL Studio in a few videos. But for now, you do not need to know what really is going on. What we have on the left here is basically a piano. The only difference is that the piano is kind of rotated 90 degrees. But here you can see you still have a set of two, and then the white note next to that is C. Here you have a set of three, the white note next to that is F. So one cool thing about FL Studio is I can go to Helpers, and I can go to Scale Highlighting, and what I can do is I can select a certain scale. So here I have F major selected. So hopefully you can see in the background that all of the darker rows here are representing notes that are not in the scale. So for example, I have the F major scale here. I cannot play the B note. And you'll notice right here where I have a B, it's black in the background. Now I can place this here as a note, but it's not part of my scale. So if I were to make a beat using FL Studio, what I would wanna do is make sure that all of my notes are somewhere in the white area stay away from the dark area. So regardless of whether you're making a chorus or you're making a beat, you'll want to make sure that all of your notes are in the same scale. You're singing in the same scale as the instrumental. Let me go ahead and put this back to C major, which if you remember is all the white notes. So all these black notes are part of the shadowed areas that I'm not allowed to play in. Now I want to briefly talk about chords. In a chord, you always have a root note. So for example, if I want to play a C major chord, I'll go ahead and populate right here. This will cause it to play this sound right here. But if I stack on top of that, in order to make a major chord, what you want to do is go four half steps up, then another three half steps up. So here we have a C, and we're going to count up one, two, three, four. And then we're going to count up one, two, three. It is important to note that I did not start counting at C. I didn't go one, two, three, four. I started here, then I went one, two, three, four. And these are all half steps. Then I go one, two, three. And if I play that, that is a C major chord. Let me do one more example with a G major. So I'm gonna go ahead and populate here with the root note. And then I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four. One, two, three. So now we have a C major chord followed by a G major chord. Now, if I wanted to do a minor chord, it would be very similar to that. The only difference is instead of going 4-3, you go 3-4. For example, if I wanted to make a D minor, right here I have my note D, and then I go 1-2-3, then I go 1-2-3-4. And it's perfectly fine to have a combination of major chords and minor chords. All that matters is that everything here is in the same scale. So I'll go ahead and play that. We have a C major, a G major, followed by a D minor. 
Real quick, I'm just going to stretch this out so it's a little longer. And I'll go ahead and click on play. Another thing I can do is transpose. What that basically means is I can select this whole chord right here and then go down one octave. Notice that the notes here are D, F, and A. The 5 corresponds to which octave it is. So here you have a C5, that means that this is the 5th octave. But if you scroll down, you also have a C4, which is the 4th octave, and it's one octave lower. So if I go ahead and transpose this entire chord down one octave, these are still the exact same notes, a D, an F, and an A. The only difference is now it is one octave lower. When you have a scale, generally you have a tonic. And a tonic is basically a note that feels like home. I've heard this analogy a few times when talking about melody writing, where you kind of view the tonic or the home note as a place to start. So for example, in the C major, your tonic would be C. So I'm just going to make a quick little melody here. So this is a very basic melody, but it kind of starts out here at the tonic, and then it kind of travels away, and then it kind of bounces around, and it'll occasionally go back to home. But generally, when you're writing a melody, it almost always comes right back home at the end. Real quick, I'm going to stretch out this note so it doesn't repeat. Now I want you to compare that real quick to if I got rid of this note altogether. So hopefully when you hear that, you can kind of tell it doesn't feel fully resolved, right? As a melody, it's going through this journey, but then at the end, it doesn't quite come back home. So that is something to think about when you're writing your melodies. Now, if you were writing some kind of pop melody, like say a chorus, you kind of want to stick to the same rules, but you would probably have a little bit more repetition. So here's some kind of example of that. This is actually from some kind of pop song. I just can't remember what the name of it was. And I'm recalling it from memory, so it's very possible I'm in the wrong scale, but I'm, I'm doing it in the C major scale here. But the general idea is the same. You're starting off in a specific area, you're kind of traveling away from that area, and occasionally you'll come back home, but then at the end of it, you're coming home on each, on each iteration. And I'm really just remembering the basic melody in my head, so it's very possible I'm in the wrong scale right now. But that also kind of brings me back to my point. Even if this is in the wrong scale, music is mostly relative. So right now you would say that this is in the C major scale. If I were to take this whole thing and transpose it up a little bit, now all the notes that were C are now D. And if I were to go here to the helper and change it to D major, you would now see that all of these notes are within the scale of D major. The only notes I'm not allowed to play in D major are the ones that have the shadow. So for example, I wouldn't be able to play a C. So let me go ahead and play this real quick. So as you can tell, all the notes are still the same distance away from each other. It's just in a different key. Let me just go ahead and add in a C right here so you can hear what it sounds like when something is out of key. As you can tell, these two notes have a dissonance, basically meaning they sound bad together. So if I were to put in a different note, say for example an E, which happens to be in the scale, and these two notes play at the same time, they, they're definitely going to sound different, but they're not going to sound bad together. So that's kind of how you can make harmonies. For example, let's say I have an E here, E here, and then we'll put in F sharp. And you might even be able to imagine something like this. Now here's where things might get a little confusing. When we talk about minor scales, there are actually three types of minor scales, and we're only going to be talking about the natural minor scale. You can definitely go out there and research the others, but what is weird about the minor scales is that they have the exact same notes as the major scales. So for example, A minor is all of the white notes, and you might recall that C major is also all of the white notes. So let me go ahead and clear this out. So let me come back here and make sure that I have this set at C major. And I hope you already understand that when I set this to C major, all, it, all it's doing is giving me kind of lines that I can color in. It's not stopping me at all from going outside of that scale. If I wanted to play weird notes, I can definitely do that in that black area. So it really is like coloring in the lines. 
But if I wanted to make a melody using the C major scale, again, you would want to make sure that your melody kind of revolves around C. But if I were to make one using A minor, you do the same thing, but you make sure it revolves around A. However, with the minor scale, you'll notice that it, it feels more dark or somber. So all of the rules are more or less the same. And making chords is the same. So let's say I wanted to make an A minor chord. I'm actually going to go one octave up. So here I'm going to start at my A. And then I'm going to count up one, two, three. One, two, three, four. All right, so I drew that out for a little bit so the notes hold for a little longer. And I can make a G major chord. So again, starting at G, I'm going to count one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Again, note that everything is inside the scale. I'm not using any notes that are blocked out by these shadows. And I'll go ahead and stretch this out a little. And because I have more of a focus on A, it has more of a sad vibe to it. So I think that's about everything I wanted to cover. So the main thing I want you to take away from this video, number one, if you're making a song, whether you're making a chorus or you're making a beat, you want to make sure that all of your notes are in the same scale. Number two, if I make an entire song, including my chorus, including my guitar, my piano, whatever instrument you have going on, and if I were to make sure all of those notes are in the C major scale, if I were to transpose from a C to an F, so I would move everything up one, two, three, four, five steps. That would effectively mean that everything now is in the F major scale. So everything is still in a key, the only difference is instead of C, it would be in an F. So for example, this is all in an A minor scale. If I were to transpose everything up five steps, one, two, three, four, five, this is now in a D minor scale. But everything is still in a key, not in the same key, it is a different key. But everything will still sound good together. I want you to know how to make chords. For example, C, if I make a C major, I go one, two, three, four. And then I go up another three. One, two, three. So C, E, and G are the notes for C major. If I wanted to make an A minor chord, I would start here at A. I would go one, two, three. Then I would go one, two, three, four. So that means A minor is A, C, and E. And hopefully you don't get confused between chords and scales. Chords are a subset of a scale, meaning all of these notes are part of the C major scale, but only C, E, and G are part of the C major chord. I want you to know that if you're making a song, for example, in A minor, you want to make sure that your melody is somewhat based around the note of A, which is the tonic. If you are making that same song in C major, you would want to base it around C. If you were making a song in F major, you would want to base it around F. So the tonic is in the name itself. And I think that's about all I wanted to cover as far as music theory today. Again, I'm not going super in depth. This is really the basics that I think anybody should know. Even if you're a rapper, you should know a little bit of music theory. Because at the end of the day, you're going to want to be responsible for making good hooks. You're going to want to be able to make beats. And even if you don't do either of those things, you should still have a general idea of, okay, if I'm rapping, I need to be rapping in a certain key. So that's about everything I have for this video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you learned something new, and I will see you next time.